It's not clear how to illustrate how much more it is than petascale, if, but I can give you sort of an idea of, of numbers. Maybe that would help a little bit. If you look at the newest machine they're now installing at one of the national labs, Oak Ridge right next door actually, um, it's going to have 140,000 compute nodes, or cores it's called in it. Okay? Uh, to get to exascale, you have to add another factor of uh, 100 almost to 1,000, depending on speed of these cores to get to that level. So now you're talking rather than 100,000 plus cores, you're talking uh, 100 million and more plus cores, right? Now it sounds awesome, how do you ever get there, right? But it's actually happening pretty quickly in industry because um, we're miniaturizing computers so fast that where you now buying your favorite laptop dual core Pentium or something, right? Or core dual laptops with two cores in them, uh, people have already shown the same little tiny chip in this laptop with 60 different cores. So we've gotten from 2 to 60, and we know we can do that now, right? Uh, so it's not that far to get from 2 to 100, maybe to 1,000 cores on a single tiny chip this big, right? Um, so getting to exascale isn't that far-fetched. Now, the, the thing people always think is that there's a single large machine that becomes huge, right? Um, and that's all the model that the national labs, the, Do the Department of Energy national labs will be using, uh, such as the Oak Ridge National Lab, because they're looking at running single really large applications. Uh, in the weapons labs, they'll do nuclear modeling and such applications, like nuclear blast modeling and such. But in, in Oak Ridge, they do more commercial and, and scientific applications. They do fusion modeling, uh, to see if we can ever build fusion reactors, <laughs> which would be very useful, right? Um, and they do uh, atmospheric and weather modeling tasks there. So again, m those tasks are very easily scaled to be very large, and they can use these large machines. The more practical way in which my project is looking at this actually is not a single large machine, but imagine sort of your typical Google data center that's out there now. Right? It already has 100,000 computers in it. And those people want to grow too. They're growing fast, in fact. Um, so if they could scale to a million, to 10 million, to 100 million, they would do it. It has to be cost effective, though. So they can't just build bigger and bigger buildings and consume more and more electricity, right? They have to do it in new ways. And that's where exascale computing comes in as being really useful. Then, of course, there's a lot of commercial applications that are quite valuable, and such as applications and materials modeling building next generation materials that are better than what we have now. Uh, airplane manufacturers do aerodynamic studies on airplanes to save gas, right? So do gas, so do uh, car manufacturers. So there's a lot of those commercial applications as well that require these large machines. Most common people will see those kinds of direct effects from the internet usage. Um, the internet gaming that's going out there will, you know, will be much richer than it is today by having faster and more machines available to these sets of to people that do uh, distributed gaming. Um, so those are all very direct effects. Then you know, less in indirect effects will be better gas mileage for your cars. That's very desirable these days, right? Um, um, maybe the airlines can survive because our planes are more fuel efficient um, because I mean, that requires extensive studies in aerodynamics and, and uh, in, in efficient uh, uh, air flows across planes when they're in the air, when they're taken off a landing, right? Um, and of course, the other thing you will see is uh, improvements in weather prediction, hurricane, uh, emergency event prediction, because we can process the data much faster. It comes from the sensors we have everywhere. So hopefully, we can do much better jobs of locating where exactly tornadoes will touch down and where they will appear in the future. So I've been working in parallel computing since I first started my career, and most exascale machines are parallel machines, actually. Um, so you have to understand about parallelism, how to exploit parallelism, um, how to run uh, many tasks at the same time concurrently so you can get the power these machines offer out of these machines. Um, my other expertise that's actually more relevant for the project I'm undertaking is looking at management tasks, where once you get past the moderate number of machines, there's no way humans can still keep track of which ones are even there, right? Which ones are currently running and operating, which ones have failed, um, which ones can be used for certain tasks. We just can't do this. We have to automate these kinds of tasks. Otherwise, you can never go to these kinds of scales. So our research is actually in automation 
in, uh, in managing these very, very large machine architectures and large data centers while they're being run. So there's new technologies that systems folks have developed called virtualization technologies that help manage data centers essentially. Um, but that doesn't stop you from having to actively manage their power consumption. It's one of the research areas I, I undertake. So you can see that in order to make these machines usable actually for large tasks and constrained power consumption, we really do have to manage them actively. And one of my expertise is in, in, in management tasks for high performance and large scale machines and data centers, including power management. The plant has two components. One is to look at, uh, at future building blocks for exascale machines, which are more and more these interesting combinations of um, I'll give you an example. If you take a high-end machine for your home for game applications right now, right? what does it have in it? It has a com normal, say, quad-core or dual-core Intel chip in it, say, right? and it'll have uh, a graphics board, NVIDIA or such board that you have to uh, buy in addition to make your game and your visual displays be fast enough for real-time gaming. Uh, mm -hmm. And it has some very expensive boards. So what industry has been doing now is actually putting these specialized components like graphics boards onto the same little tiny chip as the general purpose processors are. Okay? So, um, so future building blocks for exascale machines will consist of these mixes of normal Pentium cores that run your normal programs plus these specialized cores or processors that do things like high, high performance graphics and similar tasks. Um, so that's part of the research we do. We look at how to effectively manage and um, operate those kinds of mixed capability chips. Uh, the second part of the, the effort looks at scalability issues. How do we scale to these very huge numbers of, of processors and machines, right? And, uh, and there we're looking at, at first, the, the simpler task of how do you even keep track of what they're currently doing? People call it monitoring, monitoring these systems, including then to manage them, for instance, for power consumption. The mission of the Institute, uh, we excel in lots of creative, re creative, creative research in different areas of expertise, right? So as opposed to the national labs, for instance, whose mission it is to run really large single applications for extended durations. So they can easily justify in their budget buying the next largest machine that's out there because they can run the same simulations that are now running for three weeks in, in one week, say, right? Um, whereas our strength really is the creativeness, the academic talent that's here, and the ability to uh, very quickly come up with innovations in, in all kinds of areas that span um, computer science, science, and, and engineering, right? So the second strength we have is that as opposed to uh, companies or that are more mission or goal oriented or even the national labs have very well defined tasks sometimes. Tech is very good at interdisciplinary work where we can put together teams of different research with different sets of talents. So, uh, so I think for us uh, much creative science and engineering is the, is the key competitive edge that we have compared to other institutions. So there's, there's two topics that that I think we excel in on the computer science side that are a bit unique to Georgia Tech. Uh, first of all, we have partnerships with other institutions that do have large machines. So one that we have built very successfully over the last years is a partnership with Oak Ridge National Labs, where just yesterday my student did a 10,000 node run, which we could never do at Georgia Tech. We don't have that many nodes, right? So we actually evaluated some of our ideas. Um, another topic, another thing we've done, I think that's been successful is to not focus on just doing large machine runs, but looking at interesting technical problems. And one of the problems that's been starting to haunt computer manufacturers as well as the, the users of these high-end machines is the whole problem of input and output. These machines are getting so fast that they can eat data so fast and produce data so fast, we don't know where to get it from and how to get it out of there. It's actually pretty frightening what's going on right now. The I.O. bottleneck, people call it, input-output bottleneck, is really starting to haunt us when it comes to uh, future machines uh, that can grow in the sizes that we need to in order to solve larger problems or deal even with data center issues. So what our group has done that's sort of unique is mix this whole enterprise world of typical enterprise application, financial, web applications, with the high-performance world and try to transition technologies across these two worlds. 
I think that's a very successful, it's been a very successful strategy for us to proceed. It also gives us more breadth in our research where we can market our research ideas in multiple communities out there.